Hello, thanks for taking the time to join me on this tour of our current exhibition, Master of Appropriation, Found Photography in the Work of John Baldessari, from the collections of Jordan D. Schnitzer and his family foundation. I'm Zimmy Barr, the exhibitions manager at Blue Sky, and it's a pleasure to be able to share some of my thoughts about a project that has been in the works for quite some time. It's a little ironic that John Baldessari's work is being shown at Blue Sky, a gallery dedicated to photography, because when he first started making art, he didn't want to be labeled a photographer, but rather as an artist that worked with photography. But perhaps this setup is perfect for an artist who also brought a sense of humor into his work, as he focused on the absurdity of life, as well as the seemingly arbitrary ways that meaning is created through text and images. The name of the exhibition, Master of Appropriation, is one of many informal titles that the artist has received over the years due to his use of found imagery in his work. This process of borrowing images for art making is not new. Artists have been recycling images, texts, and ideas for a long time, but Baldessari does it in a way that is decidedly his own. When approaching the artist's works, I think it's helpful to think of viewing them as a game, one that asks us as viewers to fill in the blanks that the artist has left out keeping in mind that we may never definitively solve the conceptual or visual puzzle. For me, the process of trying to get there is where the fun is, so I'm looking forward to nerding out a little bit with all of you and sharing some of my insights into the prints on view. We have two galleries for exhibiting work at Blue Sky, and the show is sequenced chronologically with the artist's earliest works beginning in the front gallery. Although this is not the most adventurous curatorial structure, I wanted to give those less familiar with Baldessari an idea of how his process of working with found imagery has progressed over time. The earliest piece we have on view is one of the first things you will see when you walk into the first gallery. It is called Black Dice from 1982, and it is Baldessari's first experimentation with the printmaking techniques of etching and aquatint. Unlike many of his other works in our show, it contains a great deal of the artist's direct mark making on the etching plates that were used to make this portfolio. This is why I'm drawn to this piece. It's probably the most abstract and painterly work on view, yet photography still plays an important role. Baldessari began by creating nine photo etchings using a film still from the 1948 film Black Dice, originally released as No Orchids for Miss Blandish in the UK, and based on a risque crime novel of the same name. Intended to be installed in a 3x3 grid to reference the original image, each print contains a recognizable element from the photograph, such as a lamp or telephone, yet the artist's additional gestures, made with various etching techniques, work to disorient the viewer. The faces from the original film still are also left out of the etchings, a choice that seems to be a precursor to Baldessari's use of colorful dots to cover faces. All of these interventions discourage attaching narrative or emotional content to the work, and instead move the focus to visual play. Speaking of play, much of the artist's work focuses on systems and numbering, but in a way that often seems arbitrary or unnecessarily detailed. Baldessari often seems to be poking fun at the assumed seriousness of organizing information in this way. A few excellent examples of this are in the front room, and they are called Two Unfinished Letters and Six Colorful Gags Mail. In two unfinished letters, the title is confusing because we are presented with a 4x2 grid of eight images of hands holding letters. The original images, most likely taken from found film stills, have been translated into black and white lithographs with blocks of bright, screen printed color covering six of these letters. This becomes yet another one of Baldessari's visual challenges for the viewer. Are we seeing only two letters photographed multiple times? The progression of movement from frame to frame has a cinematic feel, suggesting that perhaps this composition is meant to mimic two film strips of stacked images pushed together. Much like two unfinished letters, which is dated 1992 to 1993, six colorful gags, male, from around the same time, 1991, brings together found images, most likely film stills, that are cropped and altered through various printmaking processes and reconfigured into a grid. Here, the title also presents a bit of a riddle for the viewer. Gags can refer to the hands or other objects silencing the six pictured men, but this word can also mean a joke. Similarly, the print is visibly colorful, thanks to the artist's use of aquatint, but colorful can also mean lively or exciting. It's hard to know if what is happening in each image is just a joke or something more sinister, or a little bit of both. 
but Baldessari leaves it to us as viewers to decide for ourselves. Moving on to the next wall, we see Hand and Chin with Entwined Hands, which is part of the same portfolio as Six Colorful Gags, which was made at Crown Point Press in San Francisco also in 1991. You can probably see the aesthetic similarities due to the same photogravure and aquatint techniques. If you look closely, you'll also notice that the top image appears right side up, and the lower one seems to be placed upside down, creating a somewhat ambiguous composition. Baldessari's descriptive title gives us a clue, but again, it is what he leaves out, or what seems a little off, that the artist is wanting us to try to puzzle out. Love and Work, also from 1991, is another puzzle with clues provided in the title. In this narrow, vertical print, an out-of-focus image of what seems to be a framed piece of art floats at the top, with a long section of black ink leading the eye to two sets of clasped hands at the bottom. The narrowness of the composition accentuates the distance separating the art in the background, which I interpret as the representation of work, as in work of art, as well as Baldessari's profession, from the hands in the foreground, which it seems reasonable to assume symbolize love. In addition to the distance, there is an imbalance between the two components, with work out of focus and love in focus. Right now, this imbalance seems particularly apropos, as we are currently coping with drastic changes to the ways we work and love as we attempt to slow the spread of COVID-19. This and the three previously mentioned pieces might suggest that the artist is obsessed with hands, but Baldessari has isolated and elevated a range of body parts, such as noses, ears, and even toes, to the primary focus of his compositions throughout his career. However, Baldessari's focus on the relationship between parts and the larger whole has not been limited to the body. It is also evident in Money with Space Between, one of the two works in the show from the series, A French Horn Player, A Square Blue Moon, and Other Subjects, made between 1991 and 1994. As you can see, Money with Space Between consists of one image that has been printed in two parts. This severs the stack of banknotes and separates the two individuals, yet it becomes clear that both parts of the image, especially keeping the money intact, are required for the transaction pictured here to work. In addition, this piece introduces what has become a signature Baldessari technique, covering faces with colorful dots. As I mentioned previously when discussing black dice, the artist started doing this to remove emotions suggested by facial expressions, while also forcing viewers to pay attention to other parts of the image, in this work, and in French horn player, with three contexts, one uncoded, if you look up close, you can see that the dots are not completely solid, but instead reveal the artist's mark making. The colors of the dots also have meaning based on a code Baldessari devised early on that continues throughout his work. Red signifies danger, green, safety, yellow means chaos or madness, and blue, perfection. As mentioned in the title, French horn player with three contexts, one uncoded, contains one image, the top one, without a dot, which happens to be a fairly recognizable still from Star Wars Episode Four, depicting an Imperial Star Destroyer. Perhaps that is coded enough. In the other images, moving down the vertical line, the artist has placed a red dot for danger that obscures what, or who, lies at the end of the road, a blue dot for perfection over the French horn player's face, and a yellow dot for chaos over the person or people at one end of the canoe while bears take up the other side. These discs of color, along with the alternating dark backgrounds with bright outdoor scenes, almost mimic the rhythm of music, as seemingly disparate images are merged together into a new narrative or composition. If we turn back to money with space between, the person holding the stack of bills is marked by danger, while the other is marked by chaos. How does this enhance your initial reading of the work? We have now walked through the first half of the exhibition, which focuses on the artist's work made before the year 2000. I hope you've enjoyed this tour, and please stay tuned for the second half, which is coming soon, when we will venture into the back gallery together to look at some of Baldessari's more recent work. Until then, please stay safe and healthy until we can meet again.